Okay, so I decided to cover the importance of interpersonal communication. Yeah. Now, I'm just gonna start off by saying a simple problem. In a social media driven age, we have lost the ability to communicate more on an interpersonal level, and that has affected our relationships with people. Now, first, what is communication? After reading the article, Challenges for Meaningful Interpersonal Communication in Digital Era, author Elza Venter defines communication as the sharing of words, emotions, ideas, intent, and messages. And another way that I want to break this down into a simpler way is came from another academic ar article from Antonio Laurentes, where they go over the interaction model. And essentially how that works is the sender channels a message to the receiver and the receiver then sends feedback and channels a message to the original sender. And my interpersonal communication teacher actually said an easier way for, uh, for me to remember this, because I ain't gonna lie, looking at this, I'm like, what's going on? So think of it as a ping pong effect. And a, a ping pong effect, it works for this because essentially the sender is sending a message to the, to the messenger or to the messenger, to the receiver, and the receiver then decodes that and breaks it down and sends feedback back to the, the original messenger. And it's a give and take process. And a quick example to think of is asking a professor, is there homework? <laughs> and and, the, and they'll, an, they'll answer you, and that's, what, that's essentially what you get. And you could ask them another question or just say thank you. It's essentially just a back and forth ping pong effect. So how's that different from interpersonal communication? So interpersonal communication, according to Vince here, consists of both verbal and nonverbal communication where two or more people use words, gestures, or body language to convey their message. And an easier way for me to think of this is that there's an objective that goes behind interpersonal communication. Communication, a lot of the times you're doing it even when you're not doing it verbally. You're always communicating. You guys are communicating right now through eye contact and nonverbal gestures. But the thing is with interpersonal communication, there's always, there's always an intent behind it. It's more personal and intimate when it comes to interpersonal relationship. It's, and it's about developing relationships and maintaining them as well. And now, why am I going over this? What's the problem? Well, as I mentioned before, in a, in a social media driven age, we're losing the ability to communicate on an interpersonal level because according to DH10 Wong's article, the effect of social media on human interpersonal communication has really affected the way we communicate with face-to-face -face skills. And I'd say that because the study back in 2017 conducted a series of studies on young adults and the relationship with, with social media. And they found that a lot of those, a lot of the results showed that a lot of the adults were starting to become overly reliant on social media and they were starting to avoid face-to-face -face communication. And ironically, this happened in 2017. Three years later, COVID happened. And I believe that only amped up our, our, um, our dislike to communicate face-to-face. -face. How many of you guys would say, even to this day, if we had the ability to do this class through Zoom, you would do it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why? Because as Juan points out in one of his statements, it's because it's more convenient and we feel more comfortable doing it from social media or in COVID's case from our homes from our beds from our couches so what can we do the simple answer is well we could just communicate more right well that's that's a good start but i'm going to let you in on a communication myth i'm sure professor crash joy's heard of before just because you communicate more does not make you a better communicator the quality is more important when it comes to communication essentially communicating more in a way, and when there's not enough quality to it, that can make you obnoxious, it, it can. And on top of that, you're, when it comes to interpersonal communication, it's also about understanding the person that you're talking to. And when you don't do that, that doesn't upgrade the quality of your communication skills, and that doesn't make you a better communicator. So as I mentioned, this is a good start, but a better thing we could do is simply listen. Now, listening, there's a lot more that goes behind listening, listening effectively. As according to Judy Brandel's article, exploring the strategic ground for listening and organizational effectiveness, they study the effectiveness of, of listening, right? Using the Hurrier model. The Hurrier model stands for hearing, understanding, remembering, interpreting, evaluating, and responding. And instead of going over this process, because I could tell it might get a little complicated, I'm just going to give a simple example. A simple example is when I hear someone, I always go to the example of Adam, I heard he was a Broncos fan, and, and I related to that, 
but I was able to take that and understand it and then remember that, interpret it, and evaluate and respond to them in a way where I was able to ask him, well, if you're a Bronco fan, you know, what basketball team do you like? What other sports do you like? What are you going to college here for? And that was initially the start of our friendship. It all just started by me asking a simple question and listening to what he had to say. Now, the easy thing to also ask is, well, why should we do this? I mean, I feel like, especially at our age, a lot of the times when we're told to do something, a lot of times we ask, like, why? Like, why, why do we need to do that? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because according to Amanda Deans, high levels of affection have been associated with lower stress levels, lower susceptibility for depression, and overall a better mental health. So an easy way to think about how important this is, is that just because you're communicating with someone and interacting with them, that doesn't necessarily just mean you're helping them. It's also helping yourself. And don't we all like to feel good? Don't we all like to just have a better mental health? Don't we all just like to have a good day? You know, one, of the best ways, one of the best ways you could do that is simply reaching out to people. Because you're not just helping them, you're also helping yourself. So, as I come to a close, as I mentioned before, in a social media driven age, we are losing the ability to communicate on an interpersonal level. But now that we have the tools, we can become more effective. And a quick analogy I want to hit that I want to finish this off with is communication is like riding a bike. Oftentimes it becomes muscle memory and it becomes easy to do. And most, and it's a very, very effective tool. However, interpersonally communicating is like riding a bike with no hands. It's like riding a bike with no hands because it takes more skill. It takes, it's a hard, complicated process. It requires dedication. It's not something you learn overnight. It's, think of it as a trial and effort type of concept. Thank you.